Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown of the trailer for Marvel's Secret Invasion on Disney+. Plus. Yes, I was at D23 in Anaheim earlier, and I took a flight back to the Blue Dungeon, I'm very tired. But that doesn't mean I got to see this trailer, plus the additional scene with Nick Fury and Rhodey that preceded it, exclusive only to D23 attendees, lucky me. But since I am on year four of my scroll search, I'm pumped for Secret Invasion. Finally, an MCU Disney Plus show that takes itself seriously to an impression of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I love it. So let's break down all the details that you might have missed in this trailer and try to figure out who is a hidden scroll and why it's me. So the D23 footage opened with an extended version of the scene with Nick Fury and Rhodey in the restaurant, a brief part of which that we see later in the trailer. How much do you know about your security detail? What do you mean, how much do I know about him? But the extended version shows Fury suggesting conspiratorially that anyone could be corrupted, and Rhodey reveals that he has actually known about the threat of a scroll infiltration for 15 years. 15 years ago, the Pentagon brought Rhodey into a secret program when they first suspected something was up. So it sounds like a lot of people know about the scrolls, or at least scrolls spec them. I'm gonna stop forcing scroll into things. Anyway, according to the MCU timeline, 15 years prior to this would be around the year 2010, because probably around 2025 right now. And 2010 would be around the time of Iron Man 2, which of course is when Don Cheadle first took over the role of James Rhodes from Terrence Howard. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. But the fact that Rhodey has known about the Skrulls this whole time makes him even more scroll suspicious in my eyes since he has long topped my list of longtime well-known MCU characters, supposed normal humans with government positions who might be scroll imposters, or at least have secret scroll partners the way Nick Fury has had with Talos. How interesting would it be if Rhodey has had the same kind of arrangement with a different scroll, just a different faction of scrolls, and that these two guys were just unaware of each other both having scroll friends? But such is the nature of spycraft. You have to keep such a tight circle that you don't even know whose side you're on. But I like the idea of Fury supporting one friendly side of scrolls and Rhodey accidentally supporting a less friendly faction of scrolls. Because not all scrolls are monolithic, just like not all Krees are monolithic. There's warring factions on both sides. This isn't humans versus scrolls. This is like human and scrolls versus human and scrolls. Also, if 2010 was the year Rhodey entered a government scroll program, that could be how Marvel pays homage in a meta way to the Terrence Howard recasting, as they've recently done with Edward Norton and Mark Ruffalo and She Hulk. But the wide release trailer opens with Fury returning to Earth in a ship that drops in a beam of light. His form cast in a silhouette, kind of like how the humans look when they return to Earth in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. But like the silhouettes of the aliens who followed those humans, Fury's shadow is initially amorphous and non-human, reflecting how the supposed humans of this story might actually be alien shapeshifters. As to where Fury has been all this time, the exclusive footage of another title, The Marvels, shown at D23, may finally answer that question, a space station that is called the Saber, which seems to be based on the peak in the comics, the space station of S.W.O.R.D., at least visually, they look very similar. The name Saber would be consistent with the whole space organization of Sword, Sword, Saber. Now, in that footage of the Marvels, we see Fury on the space station with Monica Rambeau spacewalking in the spacesuit before she swaps places with Kamala Khan and Carol Danvers. I assume this is the same space station that Fury was on with the Squirrels in the post credit scene of Spider-Man Far From Home. But then back on Earth, Maria Hill shames Nick Fury for avoiding Earth and ignoring her calls, but he says this time it's different. I assume referring to some rogue faction of Squirrels invading huge portions of humanity, crossing too many lines. Notice how Fury no longer bothers with the eye patch here, allowing that scar from Goose to flirk and to breathe, but the Nick Fury at the end of the trailer does bear the eye patch. And at that point, he's trimmed his hobo beard now to a hobo goatee. I don't know, maybe losing the eye patch is one way the real Fury can distinguish himself from any scroll imposter. It could just be that the precise way a flurkin scratches one's eye leaves with such a unique scar that makes it impossible to duplicate for scrolls. Kind of like Ditto in Pokemon with the faces. You remember Detective Pikachu the movie with the Ditto face? And that was the stuff of nightmares. Ah! Every single time I record one of these videos, I gotta watch it before it goes live to make sure everything's perfect. And that means I gotta listen to it as well. That can take a while, so I'm always on the lookout for the most comfortable pair of earbuds around. But look no further, because Raycon's everyday earbuds are the most comfortable I have found. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. It's like my ears are sitting in a massage chair. They got optimized gel tips that make sure I get the perfect fit every time. And I don't have to worry about them falling out. Raycon's everyday earbuds also have an eight hour playtime and a 32 hour battery life, so I never need to stop what I'm doing and wait for them to charge. It's also super easy to switch between noise isolation and awareness mode, so I can choose whether or not I want to hear my dog barking at every single squirrel it sees. When I'm out of the house and listening to music, I can use touch controls to easily change the volume, to skip a track, to answer a phone call, whatever I need to do. It's no wonder that 
Raycon's Everyday Earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. To get yours, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash newrockstars to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. I just love how this whole trailer is swimming in classic espionage imagery. Guns and envelopes. CIA agent Everett Ross sneaking in an alley. Meaning this guy's probably gonna make it out of Wakanda forever just fine. Or maybe his scroll will. Everett Ross also been pretty close to the top of my list as possible scrolls. Now we see someone with super strength pulling a chain right off of a locked door. Now scrolls, at least in the MCU, are suggested to have somewhat enhanced strength and speed, agility, all that stuff. But I don't think they're as strong as like super soldier Captain America level. Olivia Coleman is rumored to be playing a character named Fallsworth, maybe a UK counterpart to Nick Fury, a chief espionage leader. If that rumor is true, she could also be related to James Montgomery Fallsworth, the Union Jack of the Howling Commandos and Captain America, the first Avenger. Could be his granddaughter, great granddaughter, something like that. We see her examining rows of glowing corpses and body bags on gurneys. Based on their smooth heads, I'm guessing these are scroll corpses. Maybe this is a scroll hideout where various living scrolls would hide all the bodies of any scrolls that died so that human crime scene investigators would come across alien corpses all these years. Because, you know, when scrolls die, they revert back to their scroll form. So whenever a scroll died, they'd have to put that scroll body somewhere. And all that glowing tech that surrounds them just looks like alien tech. Ben Mendelsohn as Talos grabs Kingsley Benadir's character as every other person in this museum is a scroll shape-shifting back into his human appearance. Like which one is the actual sexy Bridgerton star? I like how before the table behind Kingsley Benadir shapeshifts, we actually see a few more Kingsley Benadirs over on the left. So yes, this secret invasion story is gonna include some scrolls who are friendly to mankind and then the scrolls who are hostile to mankind. So we're gonna see scroll versus scroll and we'll probably also see human versus human. I like how this show's really blurring the lines like that. Though still, I'm just super excited to see which major Avenger or Avenger associate is gonna be revealed as having been a scroll this whole time and in which side of the scroll race that they are on. Now this museum, by the way, is London's National Portrait Gallery, one of my favorite stops whenever I go to London, and currently is running an exhibit called The Faces of Freedom, depicting various historical figures like Winston Churchill over in the far left there. I just love the shot composition here. These faces framed with the same repeated face of Kingsley Benadir, suggesting that these scrolls might be kind of freedom fighters in their own right, giving them a philosophical weight to their argument. But also it kind of hints that these democratic leaders of human history, and maybe many historical leaders, could have also been scroll imposters. Really, we're rethinking our full history with this show. Also, it kind of foreshadows how the US president might get assimilated by a scroll. We see various shots of explosions in this trailer. It looks like a corner of London that's decorated to look like a part of Russia. Those are Russian flags, and the Russian letters translate to National Unity Day. We see how Olivia Coleman's character enters a meat locker where someone's being interrogated or tortured, and it's crazy how she's directly handing them some torture tools. I'm guessing this is a scroll resisting revealing themselves, but I'm assuming they're gonna get rescued later because we actually see this meat locker with bullet holes in the walls and commandos searing off the door hinges. Then a couple DODC agents open an elevator to find a case with something in cold storage, I guess some kind of organic remains, labeled AR4. DODC's been playing bigger and bigger roles ever since Spider-Man No Way Home in Ms. Marvel and in She-Hulk, and my suspicions were right that they are investigating the scrolls as well. They could be among the anti-scroll agencies like the DODC and Olivia Coleman's MI6. Just the way the DODC approached enhanced people in Ms. Marvel makes me think that they wouldn't be too friendly about scrolls. We see Amelia Clark's character, we're assuming going to be the scroll queen, Varenki. She enters this interesting looking room with Russian writing on the door and inside a metal framework being welded together. Actually, another shot later in the trailer shows Fury entering these same doors. So I'm guessing whatever this device is, is going to be a very, very important piece of technology. Maybe some kind of WMD that the scrolls are trying to build on Earth to use against their rival race of the Kree. We get one shot of a scroll in this trailer. This one's screaming in a room surrounded by humans. This is different than any scroll we've seen. There's far more purple splotches in its green skin. And then the final shot of the trailer, the presidential motorcade gets fired on by an attack helicopter that rocket levels the SUV containing the president. Those, my friends, are the sexy black eyebrows of Dermot Mulroney. Not Dylan McDermott, not Dilry McDillett, not Dermot Baldarmolor. This is Dermot Mulroney, US President Ritson. This is the first time an American president has been referenced in the MCU ever since Matthew Ellis in Iron Man 3. I'm assuming he's being attacked here so that a scroll can take his place. Because in the Secret Invasion comics, presidential figures like Barack Obama and John McCain were implied to be scrolls. Ah, there's so much more to break down from D23. It'll all be covered in the coming days in due time. In the meantime, you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EAVOSS. Subscribe for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.